Find your place. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 13. I'll ask you to rise. I'm just going to read two verses. It'll be uh, in the middle of the chapter, uh, verses 23 and verses 24. Uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 13, uh, we read here. It says, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. You may be seated. Now, I, I've always been struck by this, this where it says that many will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Now, it doesn't say in there that uh, they just... Uh, it, it, it says strive. It says they shall not be able. And, and I've wondered many times, why are they not able? Why are they not able? Why is anyone not able to enter in at the gate? And I, I believe we present salvation sometimes as something that it's not. I don't just believe it. I know, I know that it's true. Uh, you don't just... Uh, simply walk and stumble into salvation. You don't walk down the street, as we've said, and get hit behind the head with a salvation stick. It doesn't work that way. There's, there's something to salvation uh, that we have to strive for. Now, you may argue, but that's what the Lord said. I'm not going to argue with it. I realize it's not of our works, and we're going to get into this. But there, there's a striving that must go on. And the reason it's important uh, it's not only for the sinners who need to know about salvation, but for saints who have to deal with people. For it's your duty and my duty to deal with people concerning salvation. And somewhere in your path, there will be somebody who's going to ask you about salvation. Somebody will ask you, what does it take? What do I do? Uh, and we must remember that salvation uh, is not simply that we name and claim. It's not simply that we just walk up and assume. But rather, there's something to salvation that's going to take some effort. Uh, and, and I submit to you, it's hard to die. It's simple, but it's hard. It's a simple thing to say, give up everything. But, it, but it's hard to come to grips with. Yes. And, and so we look at salvation here. And it's pictured as a gate. Now this isn't the only time that our Lord pictured salvation as a gate, in particular as a straight gate. We read it in Matthew, and you're probably more familiar with it in Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, and again, Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7 is the Sermon on the Mount. I don't know how many times I've went to the Sermon on the Mount, and, and that's where I've preached out of, uh, and I can't get away from it. It seems like that, that great sermon of Jesus Christ uh, is so full of the gospel that we preach from there time and time again. And in Matthew 7, toward the end of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, in, in verses 13 and 14, again, our Lord refers to this gate. He said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way. Now, that sounds like the easy way, doesn't it? Uh, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Now, do you remember the question, are there few that be saved? Many that go in into wide gate. It says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. First off, few find it, and then they have to strive. And that straight gate, which is presented in Matthew and in Luke, and, and I'm going to get to where I'm going here in just a moment. That straight gate, and I pointed this out before, and, I, and I'll point it out to you again. The spelling of that word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, is not the same as going straight down the road. That's S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, and here's why that matters. It's not the same word. Straight gate does not mean straight up and down. It, it, it doesn't mean that you just barrel headlong and go straight through it. What it means is tight or difficult. That's what that word means. Uh, the straits of Gibraltar or a tight, difficult place in the seas. A strait is a tight, difficult place. And salvation is a very tight and difficult gate. Uh, and, and you ask me, why don't I believe in easy believism? Because the Bible doesn't. Because our Lord didn't. Because Jesus said it was not easy. He said it was a straight gate, a tight, difficult gate. And so we know it's difficult, but yet 
I was saved, and, and I, I figured I was as big a sinner as anybody, and, and, and I know that every, everybody else I've talked to who was saved thought they were as big a sinner as anybody, and, and so how is it then uh, that we're saved, and, and yet there are others that are not? Well, the Lord said, not be able. And shall not be able. Why then are they not able? And that's what I want to preach about tonight. Why are they not able? And the first thing I tell you is that they're not able because they've refused the truth of the gate. Now let me tell you what I'm talking about here. There's a handful of things that that gate represents that are true, absolutely true. And people refuse this truth and therefore they are not able to enter in. First off, a gate is, uh, is at a point of separation. You don't simply stick a gate in the middle of a field. Have you ever walked around anywhere and saw a gate standing by itself? If you did, uh, it was an oddity, it was a remnant, it was something that was left over. Gates aren't built to stand by themselves. What's connected to a gate? A fence or a wall. Something that separates. There's something separating one side and the other side. And what I'm trying to tell you here is where there's a gate, there's a separation. And that gate of salvation separates uh, this world and that world. It separates an existence without God uh, where we're free from righteousness and a servant of sin from the other side where we're a servant of righteousness and free from sin. There are two different worlds. Uh, and that's what this, the first thing this gate teaches us is there are uh, two different ways of living. There are two different masters. Uh, and there are those who look at the gate and refuse to believe that. And so they refuse the truth that that gate represents. Now, if I said that side is just like this side, why would I go through the gate? And if I thought that going through the gate of salvation would only leave me in another pasture like this pasture, why would I go through it? So there are those, first off, that reject that truth that that gate represents and that they refuse to believe that there's two completely different ways uh, of living. There's two completely different masters uh, to serve. They refuse that truth. I'm afraid that uh, the churches are full of people who have refused that truth, who believe that you can live on this side and that side, who believe that you can serve this world and that world, uh, and so they believed a lie. And, and that means that they have refused the truth of that gate. And so I'll tell you that means they have not gone through that gate. And am I talking about unsaved people in the church? Absolutely. Our Lord talked about it. Uh, he, he several times he gave the parable of the tares among the wheat. We know for sure that there are people among the church who have refused this truth that the gate represents that there are two different worlds. Furthermore, and of course it means there's a difference between the different worlds. A difference between the people of the different worlds. And God's people are not like the world's people. And we live with a different desire in our heart. Oh, yeah. And if we have the same desires, we're of the same world. We're not of a different world yet. <laughs> but see, that, truth, that gate also shows another truth. It allows passage. It is possible to leave this natural world and get to that spiritual world. It is possible to be saved. Oh, yeah. It is possible to be made right with God. Oh, yeah. It is possible for a person to be forgiven of God. It is possible. And that gate shows the truth of whosoever will. For it's an open gate. Uh, and, and it shows that you can pass from death to life that there is an opportunity given unto all men that they may be saved. For after all, the gate is not simply, uh, although it's attached to a wall or a fence, it's not part of that wall or the fence. It's a gate. It's an opening. It's an opportunity. And all people do have or have had an opportunity to cross from death to life. And that means that no one stands without excuse. No one can say that God simply never gave me a chance, that it's not fair, I was 
never presented a way that I might be saved. And I was predestined to go into hell. That's not true. This gate shows the truth that there is an opportunity to pass from death to life. So as the truth of the gate shows a separation, it also shows an opening. The last thing I tell you about the truth that got rejected is it's a gate. It's not in a it's not a hole in a in a fence 90 feet wide. It's a straight, tight, difficult gate. And though passage is given, passage is restricted. You hear me? This is the truth people stumble at the most. The passage is restricted. I believe that gate is just broad enough for you and for you alone. I do not believe you can hold anything in your hand when you go through that gate. You must leave everything, everybody behind. Everything, everybody. You know, some things are precious to one while they're nothing to another. Every person, I believe, has their own thing that's a stumbling block that, uh, that would hold them back, that would try to prevent them from going through that gate. For some it's their family, and some, for some it's their reputation, for some it's their lifestyle, for some uh, it's, it's, it's money itself. Whatever it may be, every person has something that would hold them back that they can't fit through the gate with. And, and you, you perhaps heard of how the raccoon and, and monkeys and other animals that gather with their hands can be trapped by a marble in a hole, when they grab it, they won't, won't let go, won't pull their hand out. And, and, I, and so therefore they're trapped. And I believe there are people trapped on the sinful side of life without God because they won't let go to enter in the gate. But the truth that that gate represents is that while there is a passage, it is restricted. You can only enter in that gate by yourself. Right. You can't go in with arm in arm with other people. You can't carry anything in your hands. It's an all or nothing passage. The second thing I would tell you, because this is where it leads to, it, not only have people been not able to enter in because they refused the truth of the gate, but also they've refused the terms of the gate. Because there are terms of the gospel. The Gospels, it is a free-for-all, but it's not a free-for-all. It is free for all who will believe, but it doesn't mean it's free for you to interpret any way you want to. Uh, although God's offer is given freely, it's still God's offer. And it's not our offer. It's not our interpretation of His offer. It's not uh, a deal that we made uh, on His offer. It's either His offer or there is no offer. Uh, it's either going to be God's way or there is no way. That's why, again, the gate is straight. There are terms of the gospel. Uh, we cannot serve two masters. Jesus himself said so. Therefore, we cannot continue with the life we had and serve him. We cannot have our heart changed and have the same heart. Now, doesn't that make sense? Either we're going to love things, different things, or we'll love the same thing. If we love the same things, we've not taken the terms of the gospel. Right. Jesus didn't say, come anywhere you want to. He said, come unto me. Right. See, if we get up off of our tail feathers and go anywhere we please, we've not went unto him. We have refused the terms of the gospel. Refused the terms of the gate. We'll go his way or none at all. I tell you, it's a dangerous thing. We were talking this week, some about even some members of my family. I won't go too much into their testimony. There's been some times in my family's history where, uh, like many other families, and probably yours, where a few came in at one time, and years later there was a few at one time. Uh, there was a, quite a few in 57. There was a big revival in, 50, in 66 where several came in, and again in 82. And, uh, and, and during those times, it's happened more than once that one almost, almost got saved. And sometimes they almost got saved one time and got saved later. And, and so that is with some people. Some almost go through the gate now and then go through later. 
But because of a refusal, some almost go through and never go through. I can tell you that when I was about 22 in Beaufort, South Carolina, I almost went through. I came to the point I believed it was all true. I believed everything in my mind. I believed every bit of it. I even got to the point I wanted to get saved. But I refused at one point. It's why I preach this so much and so hard. It's because I was one of those who refused at one point. The one point for me was I would not give up control of my life. I would not. And so I did not get saved. Right. Yeah. And I lived very badly after that. It always gets worse for somebody yes, that refuses. It, yes, it, does. Okay. it was 15 years later when I got saved. And I thank God that I had an, another time, another offer. Yeah. Thank God that it didn't destroy me in the midst of my sin. Refusal in one point, refusing the terms of the gate, is absolute, and it is an absolute refusal. And so why are people not able to go through the gate? They refuse the truth of the gate and everything it represents. And they refu refuse the terms of the gate. There's one last thing. They refuse the time of the gate. Of the gate. That gate may be open or closed. And you say, no, it can't be closed. Read the next verse. Read the next verse in your Bible, verse 25. When once the master of the house has risen up and hath shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and knock the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. And it goes on with what they say, trying to convince him, but he will not open the door. God is not required to save anybody because they demand it. Everybody is given an opportunity. But I want to tell you, no conviction, no conversion. That's just as plain as it can be. Except the Spirit of God draw a person, they will not be saved. The gate is not simply a, a place where we can go and demand entry. We are offered entry. We cannot demand it. And there's a time given to every man and every woman. But the time is not forever. In one place the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He told us to strive. He said, My spirit will not always strive with man. And I, I know that there were times where God gave me opportunity, but I also know there were times where I had no desire whatsoever to be saved. But God's Spirit did not draw me. And so again, I preach this because I know it to be true. Because I know it to be dangerous. Yes. And when you're speaking with somebody, if you are saved, please understand the urgency if anybody has any desire to be saved, for the time is critical. Today, while it's still today, yes. harden not your hearts. Today is the day of salvation. And this is said for good reason. This gate is not something we go up to like a gated community and push a doorbell and gain entry. But rather, if, the day, if it's closed, it's closed. You have to go when you're called. If I could get anything to these young children, it would be this. When God calls you, go. Yes. When God calls you, don't worry about anything. Go and believe in Him. And if I can get anything to you when you're dealing with somebody who's tore up and who's uh, struggling with, with, with whether or not they can be saved or how to be saved, if there's anything I can get to you, it's this. It, Time is of the essence. It is urgent. If they're under that convicting power of the Holy Ghost, drawing them to Jesus Christ, uh, don't put it off. Uh, leave work if you need to. Uh, go with them if you need to. Pray with them wherever they're at. Uh, encourage them. Let them know that now is the time. Don't wait till the Sunday morning service. 
but be saved now. Uh, Paul and Barnabas, when they, uh, by the miraculous power of God, were released from the prison in, in Philippi, and the jailer came down after they had secured him that he wouldn't kill himself, and he came down and asked for a light, burst in and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? They didn't say, Show up at church next Wednesday night. But rather, they, they told him right then, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou mayest. And I tell you, you may have to explain to somebody what that means. You might have to. That's all right. You might have to tell them, listen, you've got to pray. You're going to have to do this yourself. You're going to have to talk to God. Right. This is your soul. This is your eternity. I can't do it for you. You may have to explain that to them. You may have to get in there and cry and pray for their souls yourself, but you know that you can't save them, but still asking God to open their eyes, open their heart, help them out. You may have to get in with a, where, where, all, where the fighting's going on, the spiritual fight. Oh, yes. But don't let the time pass. Right. Because if, if whoever's in need refuses the time of the gate, it's the same as refusing the terms of the gate and the truth of the gate. It can be like so many that shall not be able. Time matters. So, what is this thing of striving? And I'm almost done. How do you strive to enter in at the straight gate? What's that about since it's not of our works? I'll tell you, the striving at the straight gate is not arguing with God. It's not, it, it's not fighting against God. No. It's fighting against self. Right. The strife is with self that holds people back. Right. They're not able because it's self that causes them to refuse the truth. It's self that causes them to refuse the terms. Love of this world causes people to refuse the terms of the gospel. They will not let go because they've not gotten victory over their own loves and lust for this world. Right. The strife is against self. It's against this natural man that says, I want to live. And in order to go through the gate, the natural man must die. That's where the strife is. And you might as well let somebody know if you're going to be honest with them when they're dealing with salvation. You might as well be honest with them and let them know you're going to have to die to everything. Because if you don't, they're going to get up and have strife and have a struggle after doing everything you said and turn around and blame you. But if you've told them honestly, you're going to have to die to everything, at least they'll know what they've got to do. At least they'll know the truth of the gate. And they'll know the terms of the gate. And if it's their time, there'll be no blood on your hands. You've told them all. You've told them everything. And I believe I've told you everything tonight. Because entering the gate is simply a matter of walking through it. Once the strife with self is over, once a man or a woman or a boy or a girl has died to self and said, I will not have anything of me. I will not have anything of this world. I will have only Jesus Christ. And whatever he says, I will do. At that point, all anyone has to do is walk through the gate. It's not, it's not complex. It's not complicated. It's only difficult because of the strife with the flesh. But when that's won, it's over. Enter in. For many shall not be able. Are you able? Were you able to enter in? Yes, Do you think you could help somebody who wanted to enter in? Do you think you could be honest with them if they wanted to be in, if they wanted to enter in and tell them what they could not refuse? Could you help them understand what they had to do? I hope you can. I'm not sure why I'm, I'm giving this tonight, but it was on my heart pretty heavy. Maybe you've got somebody who soon you'll have to deal with and soon have to help. And I beg you this. Please don't give them something that's not true. But tell them honestly. 
tell them honestly about the straight gate. Many are not able to enter. Tell them honestly that they'll have to leave it all, 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 all. None of this, can I be saved and do this? Well, if you named it, probably not. Can I be saved and keep this? If you named it, probably not. You must leave all. And if they will, they can enter in the straight gate. We're going to close it out here.